Amanda Rafkin, look at you. Oh, look at you in a bright non-peach room. Why are you peach? You're in Southern California. Is everything viewed through rose-tinted glasses there? I don't know. I was in a lovely white-tinted room like normal light. I cracked this green beer and it, I'm back. It fixed. It, I, you, your, your hue is back to a more back, normal. I cracked this green beer. It threw off the color scheme of my whole room. And then it's back. Okay. We can't talk about it anymore. It's no, bad. we can't. We're the, well, the, the fourth wall is already down. So I think you have to embrace that your color scheme might be shifting. Um, it might, I'm hoping this is it though. Let's briefly greet um, our, our guests. Um, hi guys, welcome. Um, we, have, we have but a humble agenda tonight. Um, you guys are all muted for the moment, but that won't be the case later. Um, I, I assume we're gonna need your help actually when we um, get to the main event, which is trying to build a puzzle um, on you know, a couple of drinks. Um, please, cheers. It's so good to see you. And cheers. especially you, Amanda. Um, you're keeping my green drink away from the screen. But, <laughs> um, but just uh, from a logistical standpoint, um, the chat bar is open. I would love for uh, anyone who's comfortable to introduce themselves. Um, we are going to start recording this. Um, so if your cat is a bit of an exhibitionist, or if you imagine someone will blurt out something off color, uh, maybe keep yourself muted or your video off, though you are welcome to turn your video on and off at any at any point. Um, Amanda. Yes, sir. You and I haven't really done much prep for this, but I do have um, like a Prezi presentation that I, I think will give some structure to the proceedings. I'm thrilled. I'm gonna fly on the seat of my pants and see how it goes. I'm glad. Um, I'm going to share just the title screen and you can tell me, are we off to a good start? Does this smack of professionalism and scintillating internet puzzle content? I personally am impressed. Can't speak for anyone else though. Um, before we get started in earnest, uh, you haven't asked me why I'm wearing a white dinner jacket. Because you look great in it and to inspire jealousy in me. We both know that you'd look better in this white dinner jacket than I would. When you send it to me, we'll find out. I'm trying to give a little bit of, um, uh, you know, a sense of occasion to this event because after all, what is life anymore but sitting in front of a camera? And I also, I pulled out my, my, my bogey album. Incredible. This is going on the hi-fi later um, once we've all fallen off our chairs, but if you can see, Bogey is wearing his white dinner jacket and apparently does know how to tie a bow tie. I quite like the untied bow tie affect, but 100%. It, it's, it is an aff affectation. I think you look great. You, I'm you, here in my usual uniform. You're contractually obligated to say that as my co-constructor and co-conspirator, but I appreciate you saying it anyway. Of course, of course. Do you want to see the agenda that I have cooked up for us tonight? I, uh... With trepidation, I say yes. Here's our, here's our agenda. Um, first, I expect that you and I will need to gush a little bit um, because we haven't seen each other in far too long, um, but for Zooming. Mm -hmm. um, you, neck, after that, you're going to entertain and delight. As I do. Do you, do you accept this mission? That's irrelevant. You don't get a choice. Um, and then I guess I'll give you the opportunity to interrogate me. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think you're, you're going to be the focal point of this evening, being as oh. far more interesting and effervescent than I. That's a um, And, oh, look, it's my partner, returned from her evening constitutional. Ho ho! Hi. Jesse might be logging on in the other room. Um, in point of fact, Jesse is now a, or or is about to be a New York Times published crossword constructor. Fantastic! I love it. So she has a, a place of honor here. 
Um, anyway, the third thing on our agenda is I'm going to pitch you on a theme idea and we can try to make a puzzle um, here in front of uh, all our new friends. <laughs> and there are some names I, I, I recognize. Can't uh, wait. You ready? Sure, yeah. All right, let's do this thing. Um, item number one, um, a conversation with Amanda Rafkin. Uh, I think the, the, the people will rejoice to find that you are um, a classic wit and, uh, and a, a, a lovely human, um, as well as a, dec a decorated uh, and celebrated crossword constructor at this point. Ah, is my humbled response to that. <laughs> but I'm going to start off by uh, taking you down a notch, if you Good. don't. Thank you. Um, oh. Let's do a little bit of a, <laughs> let's do a little bit of a dramatic reading. Uh, does this, does this, oh, set of text messages, does this set of text messages look familiar to you? How far back did you have to scroll? Amanda, literally all the way back. Oh, I know how I'm looking for a number, a time number. Uh, if you are squinting at your, at your screen and can see the, the timestamp here is April 18th, 2019. I uh, was close. Uh, but I insist. I, I think we need to do a dramatic reading. So if you would oblige me. I would oblige you. I have drank a third of my beer, which means I'm already intoxicated. So I'm ready to jump in. <laughs> you are a lightweight. It's true. Yeah, yeah I know. Um, sh should I be me or you? How do you want to play this? You, you be you. Let's. Okay. okay. So from 2019, Amanda we have. Oh man, I've got to seek out your wisdom sometime. I'm a big gay crossword human and have been wanting to put a legit puzzle together if I ever get a spare moment. Music to my ears. Let's get, wait, hold on. I have to say, I have to sell this. Music to my ears. Let's get after it. For when you're ready to start the rewarding and masochistic journey of X word construction. Oh man, that's not embarrassing. Ross.trudeau at gmail.com. Everyone listening in, that's a valid working email address. Do, am I supposed to continue reading? Yeah, yeah, keep going. Cool, I'll shoot you an email later today, probably because I am ready. And if music to my, oh my God, you're fucking kidding me. Keep reading. And if music to my ears hasn't been the title of a Sunday puzzle yet, it should be. Listeners, there's a reason that I chose this uh, series of messages, which in fact are the first point of contact ever between Amanda and myself. Um, we've made dozens of puzzles together in the intervening time, um, but this was it. This was ground zero. And the second reason that I chose it was to embarrass Amanda, most, most importantly. And the mm -hmm. third reason that I chose it was because embedded in this first uh, exchange between Amanda and myself um, is uh, a crossword puzzle idea that we followed through on incidentally more than a year later. Amanda. Can you recognize what that puzzle idea is? I think I can. I believe the words music to my ears are ringing a bell. Uh, for everyone uh, watching at home, uh, this is unreleased content and Amanda doesn't know that I'm showing you this, so do not disseminate. Um, but as you can see, Amanda put together a puzzle um, with the revealer, that's music to my ears. And it's a series featuring, of... Featuring one of my favorite themers of all time, I'm bringing Sexy Bach. Um, I'm bringing Sexy Bach. Uh, this was a puzzle that Amanda conceived and executed all by herself. And then I jumped in with uh, a revealer. Um, that's music to my ears, which I thought was apt and appropriate for a music pun themed crossword puzzle. Um, and uh, we didn't even know it was coming. And we pre we preordained it in our first text messages. We build it into being. I think even before puzzles, we like even if we didn't talk about it, we inherently bonded. Ross and I have twin cats, which you may know if you follow either of us or both of us on any social media. We both have these psychotic tortoise shell cats. Um, 
And so I think like we knew that about each other, but we hadn't actually like made a point of contact yet. I don't think it's something that I don't think we should be like doubling down on the the cat angle as like the basis and foundation of our friendship. It is not, but it was definitely set a it set a tone. Fair enough. Anyway, uh, this was serendipity incarnate, and I wanted to share it with you and with internet friends and cherished new strange internet friends. Welcome one and all. Um, so the second thing that I wanted to, to talk about was- oh my God. Th th this is just to embarrass you, to be perfectly honest. Uh, this is a, a, a video that Amanda sent me a few weeks into our um, online puzzle making friendship. Um, and I think it's gonna play. Dude, look what Bruce fucking did to my revealer. Look at these fucking dumb fish. My puns are better. Yeah, that's a cat pillow. Oh my god. Uh, just, just react to that if you would. Mm -hmm. Can you tell people, give us some context for what, was, what, you, what they just saw? Absolutely not. I think it's best with no context. No, I'm just kidding. I had what was probably, actually, my memory is notoriously terrible um, to the point that I'm almost about to forget what I was just going to say. You are going to talk about I, I had a fish pun puzzle idea that still, by the way, has not happened. Maybe it was a terrible idea, and that's why. But I had all these fish puns, and maybe I'd come up with a revealer. Somehow, I ended up finding that puzzle of Bruce's, and I don't know, I guess I was just really salty. I was really salty about that puzzle and the grid art. I don't know why. I had no reason to be salty. I was nobody. I'd like never made puzzles. I was just like completely salty about that and decided to creepily add in like the most disturbing voice about the cat puzzle, which I think is what sold you on the video. I don't think it's a disturbing voice at all. In fact, I think we should upload that to YouTube and get a, a million ASMR hits. Um, I don't like ASMR. It gives me the creeps. <laughs> Um, okay, that that having been attended to, thank you for, for not hanging up on- I'm so uh, glad that you have all of these things. Your phone must have a lot of memory. I, I'm curious, Amanda, because um, my relationship with puzzles has changed dramatically um, since quarantine started. And just to get a little bit uh, more incisive with the line of questioning, um, I'm curious to know how your relationship with puzzles has changed since we started sealing ourselves in our in our um, literal boxes. Um, and I know that you started sealing yourself into a box by your onesie, more or less. And then I know for a fact that that changed a little bit. And I just want to know it, uh, if you could, sh I'd like you to share a little bit about, um, you know, how your, your relationship with puzzles has evolved. Um, sure in these challenging, unprecedented times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I'd actually like to hear your answer to this too, because you just said that yours has changed also, so I'm actually very curious now. I would think mine has changed in that this may be, I mean, hopefully not, but it may be the only time in my life that I could even a little bit say that my only job right now is to be a crossword puzzle constructor. Um, like, it's it's the, I mean, besides unemployment, it's the only way I'm making any of my money, and which is the closest that I can come to calling it, this is what I do. Um, and it is what I do all day, every day, pretty much, except watch like old TV shows. Um, I started my website, which I know we'll probably come to at some point in this dialogue, um, during this quarantine, which is something that I've been wanting to do for a while, but I'm just so technologically inept that been avoiding it but that's been a really big source of a lot of things for me because I post pretty much every day um so I think doing it every day like that is something new on top of all the various other things that I'm working on so yeah I think the biggest change for me is that it's felt like this was my full-time job which feels good <laughs> um I I like the way that feels I like doing this all day it's fun um and yeah I think I think that's probably the biggest way that it's changed for me. Some other things have changed, like things have maybe because of the quarantine, I feel like things have really taken off 
within the period that we've been doing all of this since sure. like March or April. I feel like a lot has happened and I just, you know, the stars aligned and a lot of puzzles got published within a short period of time. And then there were the competition or the tournaments um, and all of that. Um, yeah, I don't know. It just feels like it's like snowballing, but in a good way. Can I pause you there? Because yeah. I, 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 I want to react to that. Y you are, as of the last few months, one of the most published and high profile crossword constructors in the country. And, Insane to think. And I wonder if, I mean, it does, it, it, has that sunk in for you? Because it, in, in our conversations, um, you, you often like pitch me puzzle ideas or, or like uh, you still kind of uh, present yourself as an ingenue when you are like, there's, there, there are a few people who I trust more to present me with a puzzle that's going to challenge my brain and tickle my heart and uh, bring a smile to my face. I mean, have you embodied that reality yet? What do you think? <laughs> uh, no, no, I think, I mean, this is maybe a broad stroke sentence, but maybe the women, the females watching this might relate that I think there's a sense of imposter syndrome that comes for a lot of women in various aspects of professionalism. Um, I think probably particularly areas of professionalism that have historically been male dominated. Um, I don't really think about that a lot, but there might be some of that going on underneath. And also the fact that this really all did happen very quickly. Um, I think is part of what is stopping that it from really sinking in. Um, but it's interesting because professionally with the mental health therapy stuff, that's a very female dominated um, yeah. like arena, um, like therapists, at least not necessarily psychiatrists. But um, yeah, it's just interesting to, yeah, no, the answer to your question is no. I am, I am a verbose person. So I'm going to shut up and just say no, not in the, um, I mean, I don't think about it very often, but no. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yeah, no, I, I think this is, what's that? What's your answer to this question? My answer to this question. Mm -hmm. I think my answer to this question has to do with all the people that um, clicked on that link to come hear um, you talk about puzzles and to see us try to make a puzzle together. Um, this, this weird little hobby is my connection to people now. And yeah. I mean, there's, there's a, a lovely woman um, fixing a drink over there off screen who has <laughs> um, done more than anyone else to uh, help me keep moving forward and, and keep a smile on my face. But um, talking about puzzles with people who like solving puzzles and, and making puzzles has been a, a lifesaver for me. And um, as you know, I've been working with a lot of people who are interested in learning how to make puzzles mm -hmm. and we do it like this. We get on a zoom together and I share my crossfire interface. Um, and we talk about puzzles, but at the same time I've been making friendships. You are the, you know, the chief example of this in my life. Um, and we can talk a little bit about, um, you know, that magical three or four days that we spent together in LA a month after we'd um, registered one another's existences making yeah. making puzzles mm -hmm. but, you know beyond that and if, if for, for anyone listening drop your email in the chat bar or <laughs> send a dm or something be happy to talk to you about puzzles um how to put them together um because that like yeah this is <laughs> i'm wearing a white dinner jacket and an untied bow tie, Clive, um, you know, because this is like, this is high society for me. And there are a lot of, I, I recognize some of the names on the, on the chat. Um, and th like, these are the people that uh, keep me uh, a socially adjusted human. Yeah, ditto, all of that, all of it. Yeah, it's crazy. Like I've, all the technological aspects of crossword stuff. I mean, obviously like you and I did a lot of the Zoom stuff and there's the software of constructing and all that. But I mean, you were the one who told me, I didn't even know what Twitter was really like until I started making puzzles. And you were the one that told me about, you know, crossword Twitter and about how, you know, that's kind of like a community and an important part of, you know, the whole thing. 
And I mean, I never, if you had told me whatever it was a year, year and a half ago, that I would be like an active person on Twitter, I would have laughed at you, you know, but it's like, uh, <laughs> um, but like, uh, yeah, between that, I've watched uh, various people's Twitch streams. I didn't even know what a Twitch was until like recently. It's just been really interesting to kind of start to connect with people on all the different interfaces and, you know, I haven't tried to stream a couple times. I'm not technologically savvy. And like I told you before, I, I think I having a co-host makes me a uh, better. And liquid courage. Oh, baby. Don't you know it. Speaking, of, just so much. speaking of liquid courage, uh, Paolo just chimed in on the chat bar. You'd think that a, a Gen Zer would be more savvy in the ways of like trolling a Zoom chat. But I encourage, I encourage everyone uh, who uh, got Paolo's uh, message to flip this on him and, and send him a whole bunch of spam email immediately uh, <laughs> because he now deserves it. He has asked for it. And I feel no compunction about that. Paolo and I just finished working on a puzzle together that I love. Incredible. <laughs> When's it our turn, Paolo? Hey, you can, you can collaborate with other people. Just don't do it in front of me. You just announced your collaboration. What are you talking about? Um, I only have one more question for you. Um, so if anyone out there would like to hear Amanda um, hold forth on any particular subject, drop it in the chat bar. Um, but the last thing that I'd, I'd like to ask you, Amanda, mm -hmm. is, uh, is for a hot take. Hot go. I mean, I have so many. How, how could we even know where to begin? You are a lovely constructor of both themed and themeless puzzles. And I want to put you on the spot right now. What for once and for all, okay. if you had to go one route or the other, which would it be? Okay. So I'm surprised that I immediately know my answer to this because I usually am the most indecisive person alive. Without a doubt, themeless, hands down. Tell me more. Because I go through dry period. The reason I started constructing themeless puzzles whenever I started looking into that option seriously, I think it was like late last year, was because unlike you, and one of my questions has to do with this, unlike you, I go through these horrific theme droughts where my brain just for whatever reason loses that creative piece. And the reason, like I said, I started doing themeless puzzles is because I couldn't stand the idea of not being able to construct puzzles if I had no theme material. It made me sad to think that I had to wait until I was struck with something. And so I th a themeless puzzle, I can always make. There's always a cool phrase or a word or something that I'd be happy to like highlight or marquee and build a puzzle around. And I could do that indefinitely until the ends of time. Um, but I cannot sit around. I, I'm not like you in this respect where I just am in never-ending pool of theme ideas. Um, so I, I'm themeless I, without even having to think about it. I, Trudeau in French means something to the effect of pool of water. So I'm not necessarily filled with theme ideas, just... Just, just water. Um, okay, that's a fair answer. Do you mind if I share one of your themeless puzzles with uh, the folks watching at home? Um, this is my, f maybe my favorite puzzle you've ever made. Wow. Um. Oh, I'm curious. I mean, because of all people, we've made like a billion puzzles. Oh. Uh, this, uh, yeah. Uh, so. This was, this was from Nipple Week. This was from Nipple Week. Uh, for those of you so uh, solving at home, this was a puzzle in, this was an AVCX, an American Values puzzle, right? It was, yeah. Um, and it is a themeless puzzle, and it has a charming, uh, unique grid layout. And some of the things that I love best about this puzzle are related to how freaking thirsty it is. This is a thirst trap crossword puzzle if I've ever seen one. I know, it got turned down by the New York Times for being too thirsty. I am not in the least bit surprised. For the record, Amanda and I submitted a puzzle with the revealer Nip Slip at one point in the same week we we made these puzzles this puzzle was made the same week as the nip slip puzzle we just we were having a moment in time moment. it was but a moment in the woods but of course i'm referring to the phrase free the nipple which yeah i 
I'm going on record right now. I don't think you're ever going to see that in the New York Times. Uh, really? Prove me wrong. Actually, I'll tell you, they told me, actually, it wasn't, the free the nipple alone wasn't too racy. The free the nipple with erogenous zones pushed it over the edge. But free the nipple alone, what they actually told me, if I'm remembering correctly, was that the phrase was, that that whole movement was like a little bit outdated. Uh, that it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't contemporary. And I was like, okay. Like, I mean, I'm not going to argue, but I mean, I'm not going to I'm not going to argue with the fucking New York Times about nipples, okay? Like, I'll just take my puzzle and go. But, but it's, not, it's not just the, the free the nipple and the erogenous zones. Can I also draw your attention to, like, first of all, bra sizes, uh, Satanism. There's more here. Uh, like sauced. This puzzle has a, has, a, has, a like, a vibe. Does it yeah. not? Yeah. Yeah, it did. It, it, I got I got lucky um, in some ways. I mean, you know how it is with construction. Like, a, there's a part of it that's skill, and there's a part of it that's just, did you get lucky? And this one, I got lucky to get Clive, be able. To... Clive has pointed out that the word ass is also in this. Yeah, puzzle. just fully there. Just fully there. Yeah. And yeah. I, I I even looked at the clues. Like you could have done very, you know ultra things with like Lego sets. I don't know. I trust you to be able to clue Lego sets in a horny way. Uh, Could have. And as the, as the beta male in our relationship, uh, <laughs> I got to say th this, this puzzle sent me. I, yeah. I got halfway through solving it and, uh, and I had to put it aside and collect myself. <laughs> so congratulations. Yeah. Somebody just pointed out Ravish's crossing ass is, is a vibe. So, um, you know, I've got to tell you, maybe, I don't know, maybe Dr. Freud would have something to say about this, but this was not intentional, any oh of it. God, I, I, I regret sharing this puzzle at all because of this, because of 14 across. Uh. You know, well, you know what, like, I think, honestly, the only actual, like, seed in this puzzle was free the nipple, and then I was pumped as fuck to get rigged election right underneath it. The, the bottom lucky did not put in erogenous zones on purpose i like, have to know that there are like minors watching this because like ria and paolo are are tuned in so watch the language will you i can't this is who i am okay not not minors but not like you know they're in college they're probably like drinking or whatever college people do if if paolo outs himself as drinking right now i'll lose it my beer is pretty much empty so I may have to, <laughs> oh yeah, Ross. Speaking of which, Mr. Over here calling me out for being thirsty, but has a butt puzz. I, I think you're referring to the, the butt themed puzzle from about two months ago, which I gotta say, the, are there any, are there any, uh, is there representation from the gay community in, in the chat right now that's not Amanda? Because uh, hello to all of you. The, Wait, the, is that three in one screen? The 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 gay Twitter community gave me more positive reinforcement for that bottom row button <laughs> bottom than I've received Sorry. for any puzzle that I've ever put out there into the world. So a big high five <laughs> to all of you. It wasn't uh, me. I'll just say you're welcome, like uh, just on behalf of everybody. Hi, Rachel. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so that, that, that concludes the part of this, um, event where I interrogate Amanda. Um, I'm going to you some questions now, and then if anybody else has questions, we can do that, and then we can make our puzzy. Puzzy? I've never said that word in my life. How awful. I've had one beer, and I'm already puzzy? the one. Puzzy is a terrible word. That is a awful. cursed word. Awful. I wrote awful. Just forget uh, that. Uh, yeah, let's put together a nice, moist flaccid puzzy well that just went over the top okay okay well, what i want to know from you first and foremost and i'm asking this on behalf of everybody and it's a follow-up to something i just alluded to a few moments ago and this is word for word but i have written on my pad you have a presentation i have a pad okay <laughs> are, you, are you ready okay the question is how do you come up with so many themes, you fucking asshole? Word for <laughs> word, 
that I have written down. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I love you too, first and mm -hmm. foremost. I know, but that's a separate point. I, I don't know. I kind of want to kick this to certain people in the chat right now. People who seem to very consistently come up with uh, fun, original um, theme ideas. Um, but for me, but um, you, you, you'll, you'll understand what I mean when I say this, that you develop the grooves in your brain and the awareness in a moment to moment day, day to day way where you're looking, you're on the lookout for those interesting turns of phrase and those interesting things that happen in language, often in, in an organic way, um, that strike you as potentially either a theme in, in a revealer answer, perhaps, or an example of a theme. And I think the, the, the only reason I, I come up with any themes at all is because I've, I've trained myself a little bit to just be on the lookout for that stuff. So like when someone said, it was you, it was you, it was effing you. Me? So you used the phrase nip slip in conversation with me. As and I would. I was like, that's a, well, that, that's a potential theme idea, the, the style of theme that actually I'm gonna put Paolo on blast again here. Um, the first time I saw this type of theme was when Paolo published uh, a theme with the revealer answer, spill the tea. And each of the theme answers had a type of tea um, that went from the across and then spilled downward into a down answer. So like, for example, oolong was hidden in the phrase, uh, I'm not, Paolo, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was something like too long. Um, and the, the oolong part of that literally spilled downward. Amazing. Out of the, the across answer, which is, too long didn't read. Oh, that's so good, Paolo. I just added TLDR to my word list, even though it's probably crap. But so Paolo goes to school like five minutes from where I live, and it's a it's a shame that uh, he he won't be back on campus because uh, I I would give him a hug because that's a phenomenal themer and a phenomenal uh, theme idea. But I imagine it might be similar with him as it is for me, which is that like when you when the when the phrase spill the tea like enters your ear, it like goes through the like crossword black box, uh, you know, that that just analyzes it for potential usefulness, either as an example of a theme or as something that describes a theme. Um, and, and it's just it's just something you, I guess you develop with practice and, uh, and you and you're just mindful of those turns of phrase as they enter your ear. Um, minute to minute. You feel? Yeah, I weirdly get a lot of mine from reading things incorrectly because like I told you, I refuse to wear my glasses sometimes and so I like can't see and I had one last night that was amazing where it may, I don't know how this works. I would have to change. It's SM to SH. So instead of smear campaign, I had schmear campaign and it would be something about <laughs> cream, cheese, cream cheese. What? I, I, I'm just, I'm looking at, I'm taking the moment of you speaking and sharing a fun pun, pun to like look at the faces of your audience. And there was like, uh, and like every single face just lit up with like the, the you know, the, the appreciation that crossword solvers do when they hear like, you know, a, a pun that tickles their brain. Uh, like cream cheese too, I think, so. <laughs> Yeah, you could you could just make me giggle. I, I'm I'm looking at uh, at Lucy, who is in the chat and is a, a person that I've made a, a couple of puzzles with recently. Uh, who has, is another person that I like to share these like these dumb saccharine word wordplay punny themes with because she is a dumb saccharine wordplay enjoyer, which I, I imagine a lot of people are. Um, you know, in the crossword um, appreciating, solving, constructing community. And you are chief among them. You're, you've got it bad with like the bad puns. You really yeah. do. Yeah, I know. It's a, it's a gift and a curse. It's a gift and a curse. Um, hey, you want to make a puzzle? Sure. This is my let's make a puzzle dance. Okay, I like it. Is it going to catch on? Probably not. 
I need to get another drink, though, if we're going to be moving to phase two, so. You can't leave us alone. I was about to pitch you on a theme. Okay, well, then you do that, and then I'll get a drink. No, no, get your drink. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just riff. Go ahead. Okay. I'm going to be gone for, like, 15 seconds. Great. I've got 15 seconds worth of material. Hey, uh, if you're looking at Jesse Bullock in the video, that's uh, my partner, and she's in the other room. Uh, and I'm going to riff on Jesse for a second because we're not married, but we will be soon. I haven't asked her or anything. It's just going to happen at some point. Um, and when she becomes my wife, uh, then I will really relish the opportunity to call Amanda my ex-wife and Jesse my wife wife. We're a mixed family. We are. It's a blended family. Very progressive. It's very progressive. And not to mention, I look forward to like walking into ACPT and like introducing Jesse as, as my wife, you as my ex-wife, and your partner as my ex-wife's in law. Uh, le lesbian uh, lover. Yeah, I love that. Just love that. <laughs> just to throw everyone for a loop. They'll enjoy it, I think. I think they will too. All right. Can I pitch I'm you? I'm, I'm going to be very upset. I'm officially tipsy, so I think we should start making this puzzle. Um, there, there's actually a cat hair floating in my French 75, which is right. how, that's how we roll. Um, <laughs> I have a mug that says everything tastes better with cat hair in it. Maybe you need one. Oh my God. I, I think the reason I chose this photo of us for like uh, the promotional material was because look how hot you look. <laughs> You're right. That's what it is. Look at this face. Is there it's anyone in Puzzle World? Uh, like the like the axis of like good at making puzzles and like a total smoke show. Like you're you're like mm -hmm. you're up there. Up there. Me and Jesse ruling the roost. Oh my God! You guys are just orbiting each other. Mm. Uh, so. Jesse, hi, by the way, I'm looking at your face right now so that I can wave directly to you. I scrolled down in our little video thing. Oh my god. I don't know if she can hear me. I guess she can. When the ex-wife meets the wife. Yeah, right. We're old pals. 